So welcome back to another video sequence. In this, uh, which is the start of several concerning load and save, as its name suggests, we're going to set up two further operations essentially for our web service. Specifically, we're going to be able to load data from Siebel into OPA, and then we're going to submit data back into Siebel. In fact, from now on, I'm going to use the phrase load and submit rather than load and save uh, because submit is the button that you see in OPA and that's what triggers the send back to Siebel. I'm going to go to my web service that we sorted out way earlier on today. I'm going to make sure all my services are running. going to log into Siebel, go to my inbound web service and hopefully find it easily. So our job now is to add a third service port. Since we imported most of this information earlier on using the uh, SIF files and the inbound web service, we're actually just going to rebuild um, one of the service ports that you may already have. I find it easier for learning purposes if I explain it as if I was adding it myself. So if I go to OPA generic connection, in my case I only have two service ports. So I'm going to add a third service port here and I'm going to have to go and pick out the relevant workflow process that makes this service port happen. So after having named this new service port load, go ahead and query for the implementation name called OPA load for PUB sample intake contact. This is the workflow that was imported earlier on and it is a workflow that imports low PUB sample intake contact integration object. Don't forget you'll need to change both the transport, the URL as well as the binding so make sure you get all of those sorted out right now. Sort out the binding first and then you can copy and paste from one of the existing lines. You'll notice that as before your new service port uh, will need an operation and the operation will have the prefix c-o-n-n -N underscore l-o-a-d uh, sorry underscore load which you remember the prefix was stated in the connection in the OPA hub. The things that commonly people forget are to add the filter business services. These business services are responsible for removing and basically handling extra XML tags. So make sure that you add the request filter service, the request filter service method, the response filter service and the response filter service method. You can simply use check alive or get metadata as your example if you're not sure which values to put in. But suffice to say that this business service is provided for you in the white paper. So now we have an extra service port. All looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead now and add the submit or rather save but it is essentially called submit. The implementation name this time round is OPA submit for PUB sample intake contact. Change the transport and the binding and go ahead and update the URL. Make sure if you're copying and pasting the URL that you get the whole string and don't accidentally leave off an H or an HT in HTTP. And don't forget to add the operation again and set up the request filter service and the response filter service and the corresponding methods from the business service to tidy up the XML the, the, that is generated. Forgetting to add these is a very common mistake and it results in a web service that has essentially uh, XML tags that shouldn't be there. Clear the cache 
obviously um, if you're doing this step by step um, you should be okay but if you are just joining us you might need to compile any integration objects uh, as well but after a brief delay and a good clear cache you should be able to generate a second WSDL which would now have four service ports in it as opposed to two from the previous one. So you're probably thinking, well, then what's this error message? This is an error message that you're very likely to see when you are generating the WSDL for the first time. And it concerned namespaces. There it is again. Uh, it's concerning the namespaces used on the integration objects uh, that are part of the load and submit um, actions. Fundamentally, it means that we are going to have to do some surgery to the integration objects that were supplied in the zip file. Um, a reminder that the zip file actually dates from, I believe, late in 2016. So uh, if you're using a more modern version of OPA, which I am, you're quite likely to get this mismatch between the namespace of the integration objects and the namespace that is expected by your OPA hub when you call the different service ports. What I tend to do is I use the Siebel Tools comparison window to make sure that there are no mismatches on the XML namespace. Specifically, it should match the SOAP action pattern that you set up in the connection, which in my case was 12.2.5 rather than the 12.1 or whatever it was that was in those integration components. I will recompile them, restart my Siebel server, log back into Siebel, and I can now go to inbound web services and clear cache. since I've uh, changed the underlying integration components. After clearing the cache, I can then generate the WSDL and save the WSDL with a decent name. I'm going to call this one Part 2 because it's a second version of the same WSDL. Open it up as a new project in SOAP UI. There we go, I'll rename it as part two. And load it into SOAP UI. And hopefully when you do so, you'll notice we now have four different actions that we can accomplish. So we need to look at how to create simple test, load and save actions. This, the load request, uh, which comes out as standard, is going to need quite a bit of surgery, so I'll provide you with an example. But as you can see from its format, it's quite straightforward with a header with your login details, followed by a table and a set of fields, um, which is essentially the OPA vision uh, of uh, what data it is that we're going to load from Siebel. If you get an error message like this involving files and file extensions, there are two things that are happening here that you might have forgotten about. The first is that in this version of Siebel, there is a server parameter which governs access to the file system. And unless you have specifically edited it to include the C colon backslash backslash temp folder, you will get an error whenever you try and save anything in there from a workflow. So we're going to go and find this parameter, the EAI transport folder list. I'll see it's blank. So I'm going to need to add the C colon backslash temp or whatever folder it is that you're using. I'm going to save it. This parameter is valid at next task. So it shouldn't require a, a Siebel server shutdown. It should just require me to uh, log out and log back in. But in all likelihood, uh, it still won't work, as you can see. And that is because in the workflow process, 
that is used by the load. Um, if we go in and look closely at it, you will notice that in many places it references C colon backslash temp. See if we can find an example in here. Uh, just move all of this out of the way so it's easier for you to see. Uh, there's a right to file in here somewhere. Where is it? Here we go. Right to file. That'll do. And uh, in I'm under Windows and I'm going to have to edit this so that it's C colon backslash, not backslash, backslash. Uh, backslash, backslash is what you'll use if you're doing business service eScript. But uh, for me, it's backslash, single backslash. I won't uh, pretend there are many places in those workflows where you'll find those both save and load. So take a moment now to fix them all before you then publish and activate the new versions. Once you've done that, go to your inbound web service, find your inbound web service again, clear the cache. You've got it, I'm paranoid about clearing the cache. And re-kick your load in SOAP UI. And this time round, you should get some output. Uh, by all means, remember that um, in your temp folder, you should even see the output file generated by the workflow. Obviously, in this request, you'll see there's an, a row ID right in the middle there, and I've used sadmin as my row ID. The save request, again, is going to take a considerable amount of surgery. I'll give you an example one. The save method is going to require similar surgery. You're going to need to add a header and edit it. I'll give you an example. The output is a simple string mapped, curiously, to the middle name, which we'll talk about later. It's important for now, though, that you get a quick picture of what that submit workflow is actually doing, because it may come as quite a surprise. The uh, default workflow supplied in the zip file doesn't actually do anything much to Siebel. Uh, none of the data you enter into the uh, OPA interview will be mapped across. It simply updates the job title field as some kind of physical proof that um, the workflow has run. There will be no other data coming in from OPA's uh, attributes into Siebel. So if you've uh, got an, a row ID that you've used in your save, the only trace you will have is the job title field being updated, as you can see here. We'll learn more about this in an upcoming video.